what do you call an affective occurrence that is less than an event, functions neither as a cause nor an effect, and yet remains formative as a force, although not in a developmental way, including as that which is not captured by narrative, be it historical in the sense of feeling backward or teleological in the sense of cruising utopia. This is a question about what evades the tyranny of the plot, melodrama, or a story about the good life. As that which happens but doesn't last, it is perhaps not even a matter of being formative, even though it can be said to singularly endure in its momentariness. Durative, yet inescapably perishable, the duration of such an occurrence involves an endless emptying out, including of temporal continuity. It's what Roland Barthes described as a quote-unquote whole-filled, whole-filled, H-O-L-E, whole-filled temporality, as opposed to, say, a crystallization of time. <laughs> Furthermore, it is something other than a mere delay, pause, or suspense that simply awaits being taken up and subsumed within a developmental trajectory along which a more coherent self and a less interrupted life might be formed. Instead, this is something that is even prior to the formation of a self or a subject who would then be able to turn around and claim it for itself, incorporate or internalize it. It is in this sense inappropriable, incapable of being claimed and owned or made one's own, but it is also what cannot be expropriated, stolen, or taken away from you. In this paper, I am interested in the time of the affects, more specifically by theorizing neutral affect as a temporal genre. I argue that we are dealing with a historicity of sense or feeling that in its atemporality defies the laws and categories of genre, requiring us to move from the singular to the anonymous rather than from genre to the general. I raise this question about an affective occurrence or experience that is less than an event and non-developmental in its endurance, not only because I think it pertains to the topic of queer feeling and affect, but because I also see it to be the speculative proposition posed by Barry Jenkins' film, Moonlight. As such, it marks the film's utterly original um, utter originality and its social and ethical importance. If you've seen the film, you might rightly presume that the scene that engenders this question occurs in story two, when the lead character, Chiron, and his high school classmate, Kevin, encounter each other on the beach one night. Chiron's drug-addicted mother has kicked him out of the house for the night, telling him that she has someone coming over and he can't be there. He has spent most of the night riding the trains and hanging out in the stations of Miami's public transit system. But then he walks to the beach, described by Jenkins as a place of solace and a life-giving place. So there's Jenkins. And here is that scene. In his review of the film, Hilton Ells writes about this scene, um, and I'll, I'll quote the little passage. The light-skinned Kevin has nicknamed Chiron Black, and he, Chiron, asks why, wondering if it's a put-down. Kevin, who is more comfortable in his own body, says that it's because Chiron is black. To him, it's not an insult. This moment of confusion about internalized self-hatred and the affection of naming is unlike anything that's been put on screen before. It shows what freedom and pain can look like all in one frame. 